Well, with all the talk about rice in September, Kristen Oaks now joins us with another edition of the Ag Minute. And Kristen, let's see, we've had jambalaya, red beans and rice, we've even done gumbo. What's left? Well, Mike, we've hit on just about every way you can eat rice, but this week we're looking at a dish that you can actually drink, sake. Sake, sake, sake. Classifying the alcoholic drink can be, well, a mystery sometimes. Sake is often referred to as rice wine, but in truth, it's not really a wine, nor is it a beer or a spirit. Sake is made from the fermented rice, which is a grain. This would make the drink more like beer than wine, yet sake is not carbonated and flavor-wise tastes more like wine. During the fermentation process, rice is milled down until mostly only starch remains. The sugars then turn into alcohol, similar to beer brewing. Tracing the history of sake is also quite tricky. Most historians agree it was created 7,000 years ago in China, but some give credit to Japan. The only thing certain about sake is the main ingredient, rice. Sake connoisseurs say that serving lukewarm sake indicates the presence of minor taste flaws, and high-quality sake should always be enjoyed chilled. Moving on to this week's Twala Trivia. Last week we asked you, which city hosts the International Rice Festival each October? And the answer is C. Crowley. On to this week's question, which type of sake is referred to as mouth-chewed sake? Is it A. Kuchikami, B. Koshu, or C. Jinjoshu? Now all you need to do is log on to our website, twilatv.org, submit your answer, and we'll send the winner the usual Twila prize pack and a pound of rice and Holly Clegg's new cookbook. Still to come on This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, we take Holly Clegg out of the kitchen and into a rice field to see what it takes to get rice to your table. Stay tuned.